Hey, Dustin Vanoy here, continuing on with Apache Spark Data Kickstart. In this tutorial, I'll quickly cover how to set up a free Azure Databricks trial environment. We'll do this by actually setting up an Azure account, um, but if you have an existing account already where you want to run your trial, you can set up a, a demo environment for Azure Databricks there. So a quick note, after the 14-day trial, you will need to start over in a new workspace. So export any of the notebooks you want to keep and be ready to recreate this environment for real world scenarios or to continue on with the trial. I'll say that if you set up a data uh, Azure trial account, I should say that um, you're not going to be charged during that trial period, but you will have a like a limit of CPU and things you can do. If you have a real Azure environment, keep an eye out on, on cost uh, and see which things you might get charged for that you're using along with your Databricks environment. So if you want to see how to set up a more permanent Databricks environment in Azure AWS, um, check out the links in the description. So once we're set up, you'll see a very simple test notebook. And I encourage you to check out my other videos about learning Apache Spark, which will follow along this. Um, in addition, there's quick start notebooks that Databricks provide you can use to keep learning. Here we go. So the first thing you want to do is open up a browser and go to databricks.com slash try Databricks. Now with Azure, it's actually really easy to spin it up from the marketplace. So you may want to start in an Azure portal and go set up the trial first. But I'll show you this path that I took. So you'll fill in your information in this Databricks portal, um, choose this uh, option here, select continue, and then you'll uh, get the chance to choose that you want to spin this up on Azure. Select Azure, click continue. And what it's going to do is really send us over to the Microsoft Azure environment to set up that trial account. So if you've already have an Azure environment, I would just start by going to your Azure environment and jumping forward to a couple steps down where I spin up just the Databricks portion. So here's the landing page for setting up a, a trial, a free Microsoft account. And the way we do that is we click the start free button and fill in honestly quite a bit of information. So buckle up, I'll speed through it here. We go through the sign up process, put in all your information. I'll skip through some of it, skip over a little bit so you don't have to see my credit card information. Uh, and then we'll continue on. So in order to identify you, they do ask you to put in credit card information. And um, from what I've seen, you need to put real credit card information that belongs to you. Um, so I will suggest you do that and just keep an eye on um, notifications and things about the, the trial experience and what's going on there. I have not had an issue of it switching me and, and charging me when I'm on a trial. I've more so had an issue creating a trial once I've already have a paid account, which is fair. I get it, but uh, trying to show um, people out there how to create this trial account, I was only able to get going for just a little bit uh, before I think it realized I already have a payment paid account and should be using that instead. Of course, if you're doing this for like your company as like a real proof of concept, you can talk to Microsoft sales team about what options you have and you can you know spin up a pay as you go account and just keep an eye on the cost and keep your cost down as you test out a real solution. We are going to be very limited with CPU and, and some of the other quotas, so don't expect to come in and run a production workload and know for sure how fast it's going to be and how much it's going to cost by doing this. It's a great way to learn and experiment with Azure services, though. All right, we've made it into an Azure account. I've got like no resources in this account. So let me show you where we can go to spin up a Databricks. And as you're doing this, just make sure you choose the trial option like I will. So I have nothing yet, so I create a workspace first. So workspace is where I can set Databricks clusters and, and set up a meta store of data and things like that. Uh, I would say usually my, my, if you don't know the region and things like that is to use a region that's close to you. Pricing can vary depending on region in some cases, so you may wanna look into that a little closer. But the basic idea is that you wanna keep it close. Most importantly, as you create different Azure resources, you're often save money by keeping them in the same region. And so that's not advice on your production environment and which regions to choose, but for experimenting, if you stick with the same region, you'll probably be in good shape. Not every service and not every new feature is available in every region though. So you might want to look that up if you're trying to test out some of the newest features in particular. If you're on a trial, please make sure you select the uh, secure cluster connectivity. That's going to avoid any public IP addresses within the Databricks workspace and you won't uh, use up your limit of public IPs too quickly. Um, if you're not, then it really depends on whether or not 
you want that extra extra piece of having no public IPs within your Databricks environment. So I'd tell you to check out the documentation or a more advanced video. I don't want to get into that subject right now. You also have the option to bring your own Azure VNet, which you can choose. I don't know if that works with the trial account or not, um, but I've done that for production setups and there's additional steps. Um, so follow the documentation about setting up subnets and things like that if you're going to do this. You have some options to turn on additional encryption using your keys. Um, there will be encryption anyway, so I typically don't, don't bother with that, especially for a test environment, but that's a choice you have. Okay, so these are basically the settings I would use with a trial account. Um, if you want to enable some other things, I, I know that they work. I don't know what works within a trial account beyond this setup. So that's kind of your, your warning or your baseline of what I think will work for you. And as always, the quotas and things can change. They might disable some of this stuff for trial accounts in the future. So hopefully uh, you're watching this pretty soon after I created it and you have good luck. Okay, my resource is done being created and I can now choose go to resource, which will take me to like my Databricks workspace resource page. Uh, from there, I can actually enter into the Databricks workspace, the Azure Databricks workspace, let me be clear. And now I'm going to have a different experience, which is my Azure Databricks workspace experience. As you get in for the first time, it might prompt you with some things that you can choose to answer or not answer. It'll give you a bit of a getting started pane that you can use or not use. Um, but really, most of the what you'll want to do is on the left pane. And so we've got option to um, look at compute is the most important starting point. Your options for compute when you're in a trial are limited. And so let me show you how you get a very um, small cluster going that falls within the quota that you're allowed to use. I do recommend terminating after a certain amount of time. If you're just testing this out, I don't really recommend auto scale at that point, keep it small. Um, you can always go scale up manually later if you need to. So now I'll go ahead and create a notebook while my cluster is uh, being provisioned here. Now in the notebook, I'm going to basically set up a variable. That's the first part. Variable name equals, and then I'm going to do Spark create data frame. This lets me pass in a list of lists. So each each uh, each sub list basically is going to be a row within my data set. So I'm just going to put some very basic info just so we can make sure that I have a cluster, I can run some Spark code. Uh, and then uh, in the next step, we'll go ahead and save that as a table, which means we can now see it in the Data Explorer and confirm that we have a place that's built in that we can write data. Realistically, there's other steps you'll do to set up your own like Azure storage account outside of the, the built-in Databricks storage account that, that's managed by this workspace. But for now, we'll just do that and call it uh, a success that we stood up an environment and tested out a notebook. Really, that test notebook was just to make sure things are running. Stick with me. Jump into the next video in this series about uh, how do we start writing our first PySpark code. Uh, and I hope that you'll enjoy the journey and learn a lot with me as we go from not really knowing Apache Spark at all to being able to be productive in the real world by reading and writing data. Please subscribe to the channel. Click on notifications if you want to be alerted as I add more videos to this series to really get you trained up on Apache Spark. See you next time.